In this video we're going to take a look at TrueCrypt, which is one of my favorite applications for encrypting drives or folders, and it is now available here on Backtrack 5. And so to begin with, we'll click on Applications, Backtrack, and Forensics. Under Digital Anti-Forensics, you'll see this Install TrueCrypt. Now the first time through, I'm going to have to install this, and it will only take a minute here to install. I'm going to run through, look at the setup information, I'm going to go ahead and say go ahead and install it, read the license agreement, accept it, and they tell us if we want to uninstall it, here's our command to uninstall it, but I have no desire to uninstall it, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see that it's already been installed, I'll hit enter, it was as quick as that. Now if we go to our applications, if I go to accessories, you'll find TrueCrypt here in accessories. If you go back to backtrack, forensics, and digital anti-forensics, you'll see now that you've got TrueCrypt, so you can run it from both locations. Now I've just pasted a couple files on the desktop that uh, are just text files with the word password and pass and so forth and that we're going to use to put inside of our encrypted containers that we're going to create. Now TrueCrypt has several different ways of creating encrypted areas within our drives and so the first way is going to be the easiest way and uh, should be very simple and what we're going to do is actually create a file a larger file that will allow other files to go into it so it's going to be similar to a directory but it's going to be called a file it'll be a single file uh, that we're going to use so to start with if you look here, these are what we're going to actually mount into later. So we're not going to deal with this uh, slots at the moment. We're going to actually just say create ourselves a volume. So I'll go ahead and cr click create volume. And the default is what we want to use, create an encrypted file container. And so it's going to be, a, it's called a file, but it's also a container. So it's going to be similar to a directory. And we're going to give that a name. And it does say it's recommended for inexperienced users. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. And now I've got two different options, the standard TrueCrypt volume, which is what we're going to select, which is the default. The other one uh, we'll get to a little bit later, but it's creating a hidden volume, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's a unique thing here for TrueCrypt to have this, where you can actually type in two different passwords to give you two different volumes. And so we're going to skip that for now. We're just going to leave the standard TrueCrypt volume. I'll hit Next. I can go ahead and say select file. Now do not select an existing file. They do give us a warning here. It will overwrite that file. So it will be gone. So do not do that. We're going to create ourselves a new file. I'm going to put this one on the desktop. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit select file. And I'll choose my desktop. And I'm going to go ahead and create it as my, um, let's see, encrypted container. Go. I'll go ahead and hit save and so you're going to see it's going to save this on my desktop here on the computer I'll go ahead and hit next now I get to choose the encryption algorithm and from the drop down list to be honest with you all of these are excellent AES is wonderful serpent two fish and if you really want to you can use two of them or you can use three of them and you can use different combinations of these um, for this demonstration I'm just going to use AES like I said, all of those are going to be great to use just individually or with a combination of two or three of them at the same time. It's all going to do the job for you. Uh, the hash algorithm, three different hash algorithms, all of these are fine. Uh, usually you like the SHA-512, um, however it doesn't matter which one we choose. It, it really honestly doesn't going to matter for what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. The volume size is going to be how large is this file that I'm going to create to hold as a container. Now I've got 10.5 gigs left on my hard drive on this one. I'm going to go ahead and allocate 1 gig hard, one gig to this. Uh, this is going to be how large it is. If you're doing this on a flash drive and you've got like an 8 gig flash drive, you, know, you could definitely partition out 4 uh, gigs to this particular file or, or the whole thing if you really wanted to. Or give yourself just a file size that's large enough to put in the stuff that you want to encrypt. And so I'm going to use a gig for this. Go ahead and hit next. Type in a password for this encrypted file. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next. It does tell us a short passwords can easily be correct using brute force. That's why I recommend if you do have a password for this here to use letters and symbols. Uh, 
just to make it and, and the longer the better so that somebody cannot crack into this if it's going to be that secret that you go into this far you might as well put in a password worth it for this demonstration i'm just going to use this eight character password i'll just go ahead and hit yeah go ahead and now i get to choose a file system for the file and i get a couple different options here fat's fine for what i want to do i'm going to go ahead and hit next now this uh random pool is generated here for our keys you notice that when I move my mouse, the faster I move my mouse, or the more that I move my mouse, this key just becomes random. And so what it's trying to do is nobody is going to be able to copy this exact mouse movement. And so what it's doing is it's creating this random key. My pattern of my movement of my mouse is helping me helping make it more ra random. And it just makes it so that there's no way somebody could have said this is the key that they used to encrypt it. Let's go ahead and copy that. So this is just completely random. And I'll just keep going around. And it's good enough. I'll just go ahead and hit format now. And it's going to use these randomly generated keys to do this. You'll see the encrypted container has now been created. It's currently being formatted. And now it is finished. It says it was created successfully. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and hit OK. And I'll go ahead and hit uh, exit. And so now I've created this container sitting here. This is a single file that's a one gig in size and will allow other files to be put into this one and so this is what we're going to use for an encrypted container now the next step is now that we've got this file I can actually take this file anywhere I want I can email it I can put it in my flash drive or leave it here on my desktop this file is going to contain all my encrypted information now to decrypt it we're going to need TrueCrypt in order to decrypt this one as well so we're going to go ahead and do that step so you can see this um, pick a slot I'll just pick the first ones available here I'm going to go ahead and choose select file and we're going to go ahead and open this file. So I'm going to need to go to my desktop. And there it is, encrypted container. It's one gig in size. I'm going to go ahead and hit open. So now that this has been on here, all we need to do now is put mount. And it's going to go ahead and ask for the password. So I'll type in my secret password here. And I'll hit OK. And you can see now that it's mounted this drive. And so TrueCrypt has decrypted it. They've given me this hard drive container here to actually put files in. This is the gateway into this uh, encrypted container. So if I double click it, it'll open up just like a regular folder or file and it'll allow me to put stuff in. So if I want to put the important info in here, I can go ahead and do that. I'll just delete that one off the desktop. This important info file is now inside this TrueCrypt container. I'll go ahead and hit close and if I unmount it, so I hit dismount all, now that container goes away. That file that I just moved is inside of this actual file here, or this container that I've created. And so it was a gig in size. What it do, did was just rewrite some of the bits uh, that are in here to put the file in here. And so now it's still going to be a gig in size. It's one gigabyte in size. But that file is pretty much hidden from anybody unless you can crack this. And so just to give you a clue of how it actually works, let's just go ahead and I'll go to Applications. I'm going to pull up a hex editor so you can see this. And I'm just going to go ahead and say Hex Edit. And I'm going to go to the Desktop and this Encrypted Container. Hit Enter. If you look, I'm looking at the basically all the bits that you'll find for this particular file you're going to see that it's an encrypted file and if you look over here on the right hand side nothing is going to make sense at all and in fact I know that I put some text in there like the word password and pass and so forth so if I do a search for just P-A-S-S -S, which there were several words in there that had the word password in it and I hit enter it'll go through and do a search but I can guarantee it's not going to find a file name pass or password or any text name pass or password that text is completely encrypted and undetectable even from hex editors or whatever it is it's all been encrypted and scrambled so that nobody can find any of that information so it'll run through and you'll see that it says it was not found and so this is a great way to hide information within your container and you can take this container around it's just a, basically a file it's a gig in size now that has all of your encrypted information one thing to note is that if you want to unencrypt it or decrypt it you will need TrueCrypt again and of course you can download a portable version of TrueCrypt if you're on another computer or you're putting this on a flash drive 
and uh, carry that with you and that way you can run it even without having the administrator uh, rights on another computer so that's a good idea to do so that's the first way of creating an encrypted container now the next option we're going to use is actually encrypting a, a partition on that flash drive that I've got here and so what we'll do for this particular one is we're going to say create a volume we're going to choose this time a partition or drive within within a partition drive we'll go ahead and hit next and I'm going to use the standard TrueCrypt volume again and now I get to select the device and so the two different devices I have here is the hard drive I have installed and this is my flash drive so I'm going to go ahead and select that partition we'll hit next it does give me a little warning say it's going to destroy everything on my partition so if you've got something on there that's important don't do this without removing or backing up your information um, I'm going to go ahead and hit continue and I get to choose my of course my encryption algorithm again I'm going to use this just leave it AES and the password go ahead and hit next and of course it gives me error again for the short password I'm going to go ahead and hit continue anyway I get to pick the file system for it I'll leave it fat and for this one I'll just do a quick format and that's just because of time I would have normally left that regular though I'm going to go ahead and move my mouse around generate a random pool and I'll go ahead and hit format and it's going to tell me everything's going to be erased and lost on this drive so I'm going to go ahead and say yes and the volume has been created so this volume has been created I'm going to go ahead and hit exit alright so let's go ahead and mount this encrypted uh, partition of our flash drive that we have and so I'm going to go ahead and choose this time select device and there we go we're going to choose the device that we've got uh, the encryption on and there it is SDB1 I'll hit OK and I'll choose mount it'll ask me for the password I'll type it in and it should load it up for us here you'll notice there it is it loaded this TrueCrypt1 here this is the drive for this mount and I'm going to go ahead and double click on it and I can move a file in here so I can go ahead and control C I'll just paste that in there uh, within this partition I'm going to go ahead and close that and now if I'm finished with it I'll just choose dismount and so that partition of the flash drive now basically the whole thing has been encrypted and the file that I moved in there is going to be unreadable or undetectable from anybody else now that's using a partition of a, of a flash drive or another drive as well as creating a file we look at two different ways the last thing that I want to look at is actually creating this hidden um, section within a file or partition and so we're going to go ahead and choose create a volume this is going to be the third thing we'll do here we're going to use the file like we did the first time around I'll hit next this time we're going to choose the hidden TrueCrypt volume as we go through everything is going to look the same I'm going to choose select file make a name for it let's go ahead and I'll just put it on the desktop I'm just going to call this one has a hidden section there we go I'll choose save I'm going to go ahead and hit next we use the defaults for this and I'll make it two gigabytes in size and give it a password now this is the password I'm going to use and if I need it to decrypt the drive like I would just a typical file this is the password I want to use we will be creating a second password here shortly I'm going to go ahead and hit next and we're going to go through I'll choose format and it's going to go ahead and finish up here now alright and they're going to call this the outer volume which is going to be this whole entire file now we're going to go ahead and hit next and what we're going to do now is create within this file so I put two gigabytes as the size of this I'm going to go ahead and create a hidden section within this file so I'm going to go ahead and hit next and we're going to use whatever encryption you want to use we'll hit next and notice that my maximum size is two gigabytes here uh, for this hidden file that's because it's going to be contained within this has a hidden section file that I just created so I'll go ahead and just split it in half I'll just say one gigabyte is going to be for this hidden section hit next now you want to use a different password for this and so I'm going to go ahead and use a different password and this is the password where you know if you if you had secret secret stuff that you just never wanted anybody to know and you maybe had to compromise the original password you can hide this one and nobody will ever know that this section exists and so we're going to go ahead and hit next 
um, and we're going to go through, choose a FAT file system. It's going to go ahead, similar to what we've just done before, choose Format, and we're going to go ahead, there it is, it's created. So now it's done. I'm going to go ahead and choose Exit. So the step, steps look just the same as everything else. We're going to go ahead and mount this file. So I'm going to choose Select File, and go to my desktop. There it is, has a hidden section. I hit Open, and I'll go ahead and hit Mount. Now I'm going to type in the first password that I created, and this is for the outer volume or the entire drive, not for the hidden one. I'll hit OK, and you'll notice that it'll mount this, and there it is, TrueCrypt1. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste that in there. And we're going to go ahead and close this and dismount it. Now it does have a hidden section. This one has a hidden section. So if I go ahead and try to mount this again, I'm going to choose mount. This time type in my second password and hit OK. You'll notice that it's going to go ahead and mount a hidden section. And so this is a, a gigabyte in size. If I go ahead and view inside of it, I'm going to find that there's nothing in here. This is a hidden section from anybody else. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, paste this. We'll just go ahead and rename this. Top secret. Go ahead and hit OK. And we'll say we're done with that particular file. I'm going to choose dismount. And just for the fun of it, we're going to choose mount one more time. But I'm going to type in the original, the first password. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. And you'll notice that if I open this up, this is the old, the important info too. This is not the top secret file that I just put in there. So this concludes the use of TrueCrypt with UnBackTrack. If you're new to TrueCrypt, I recommend using the first option, which we used for this encrypted container. If you want to mess around with the flash drives, I encourage you to do that. If you find a reason for having a hidden section within your encrypted file, then go ahead and do that.